Hi y'all. It's Possum Rat, but you can call me PB for short. Part 2 of Sage Clan is here at last. In this video, we'll be going over the apprentices, queens, kits, and elders. Some housekeeping first, though. Some of you may have seen my other video about changing how medicine cats work, dividing up the role into two. If you haven't, I'd encourage you to go check it out, because from this point forward, all the videos about the clan in this story will be using the two-role system of Doctor and Guide instead. Both that video and part one of Sage Clan will be linked in the description below for you. Going forward, I want to really lean into making each of the clans unique in terms of culture. One of my biggest problems with canon is that all the canon clans are essentially just the same clan copy-pasted four times with different names. I think it would be much more interesting if differences weren't based solely on superficial things like what the cats eat or what environment they live in. I've already touched on this kind of thing briefly with how Bay Clan handles death and dying very differently from other clans, so expect more ideas like that. The other very important change in regards to Sage Clan specifically is the addition of a unique role that only Sage Clan has. A viewer suggested in the comments of part 1 that it might be interesting to have a cat whose entire job was collecting, arranging, and distributing decorations for their clanmates, and I am going to shamelessly steal this idea. Essentially what this means is that our good friend Burnt Feather is no longer a warrior. Instead, his role is designer. I think it fits very well that Sage Clan is so prosperous that they can afford to have a cat who is entirely dedicated to collecting and arranging beautiful things rather than a job that is more immediately practical. After all, one of the signs of affluence is the ability to indulge in art. Cats can go to Burnt Feather for bits and bobs to adorn themselves with, and if they need help dressing themselves up, then he's there to offer assistance. Designers often go on patrols with doctors to be sure they aren't taking plants that are actually needed for medicine so some of them cultivate a basic understanding of medicinal herbs as a result. They do also sometimes join warrior patrols to bulk up their numbers, and are given basic training in combat, just in case. This does mean that some of the wording or info in past videos may not be 100% up to date going forward. The very cool thing about this challenge is that you are all essentially watching me make it in real time, and that naturally involves some changes and revisions. Nothing is ever perfect right out the gate. I think it's way cooler to watch a story go through its growing pains, and I thank you all for bearing with me. With all that housekeeping out of the way, let's meet the rest of Sage Clan. Asphodel Paw is one of Chanterelle Star and Spiderstorm's two kits. On the scale of fighter to poet, he's far more poet. He is a thoughtful young cat and often contemplates questions of philosophy and the nature of existence. Burnt Feather is his mentor, and the two of them get along like a house on fire, as you can imagine. They often get sidetracked during excursions to collect materials to have debates about loftier concepts. The history of his family weighs heavily on Asphodel Paw's shoulders. He feels immense pressure to live up to the greatness of his mother and their distant lion ancestors, but he doesn't really feel like he's leading man material. Burnt Feather always reassures him, and likes to compare him to things like acorns and tadpoles. Small now, but full of potential and the capability to transform. Asphodel Paw isn't sure how much he believes it. He knows that he's already greatly disappointed his mother by apprenticing as the designer and not a warrior. And privately, he thinks that no matter how good at it he is, he will never be good enough. It makes it hard for him to truly enjoy the work he does, despite the fact that he is very good at it. He makes a lot of excuses to spend most of his time outside of camp on patrols or gathering materials, and can often be gone for entire days wandering around Sage Clan's territory lost in thought. For Asphodel's design, I wanted to pull in some of the same lion like features his mother has to really drive home how unlike her he is and how much he feels like he doesn't live up to that lineage. He has the same tufted lion tail and the same rounded ears, but his face shape is closer to Spiderstorm's rather than Chanterelle Star's long muzzle. I also gave him actual Asphodel as a decoration. While researching, I found out that Asphodel is considered an invasive weed in the part of California I'm loosely basing these territories on, and I thought it was fitting that Chanterelle Star would name her more disappointing child a name that sounds beautiful and regal, but is actually a little bit mean. Asphodel Paw's sister, Tansy Paw, is the exact opposite of him. She takes after her mother to an almost spooky degree, and has the same level of ambition and ego without any of the maturity. Her mentor is Slugleg, and the she-cat is doing her best to temper Tansy's intensity and teach her to be more strategic rather than simply relying on brute force to get what she wants. It's generally understood that Tansy is ultimately being trained to be leader one day, something made very obvious by the fact that she's named after her grandfather, Tansy Star. And this has unfortunately gone to her head. A lot of the time, she acts as though she is already leader, bossing other cats around, even ones that outrank her. Many of the other apprentices find her insufferable, and most of the adult cats think she's spoiled, 
but she's Sean Felstar's daughter, and that means nobody can openly talk bad about her. The only person who isn't put off by Tansy Paw is Asphodel Paw. The two are incredibly close in that way only siblings can be, and Asphodel is pretty much the only cat who can say something negative directly to Tansy's face and expect her to listen. For this reason, Asphodel Paw often gets assigned to tag along on patrols that Tansy is on, because having her brother around is the best way to keep Tansy Paw on track. Usually decorators would train only rarely with warriors, enough to get the basics, but it's generally agreed that this is a special case. Just like the other clans, Sage Clan will have a protagonist, or rather, in this case, two. Asphodel Paw and Tansy Paw are the main cats from this clan who will play a role in the story. Everyone in Sage Clan have big personalities, but Asphodel and Tansy have the most growing to do. Asphodel needs to come into his own and gain the confidence to follow his own passions, and Tansy needs to learn that the world doesn't revolve around her. I have the biggest plans for Tansy Paw. I think over the course of the story, she has the capacity to turn from an absolute nightmare to a cat who has examined herself and decided to be better, and I want to explore that angle with her. For Russet Paw, I had a very specific trope in mind. She is her mother's little princess, and that perfectly describes her personality. She likes to think that she's a refined and elegant young warrior, that she's dripping with grace and poise, and if anybody says otherwise, she'll throw a temper tantrum. She's as spicy as Fireberry, and despite thinking of herself as a delicate flower, she's the best out of all the current apprentices at fighting and displays a particular ruthlessness when it comes to battle strategies. She's the sort of cat who will claw you up and then berate you for getting her paws dirty. Her mentor is Barkspine, and everyone is pretty sure he was given her as an apprentice because of his reputation for being able to handle disasters. <laughs> he is just about the only warrior who has never once lost his temper with her, and her tantrums and diva attitudes slide right off him like water off a duck's back. By now she's learned she can't just whine and get her way when it comes to him, so she's actually started to buckle down and take her warrior training seriously. He purposefully keeps her away from Tansy Paw when they're training because when the two apprentices are together, they either enable each other or get into fights. Half the time they're best friends, and half the time they're bitter enemies, and nobody really knows which it will be on any given day. For her design, I combined Fireberry and Birdfeather. She has more of Birdfeather's pronounced snout and his color point coat pattern, but is long and slinky just like her mother. She is a cat who looks very unique and striking, something she is aware of and takes pride in. The choice to adorn her with monarch butterfly wings was one made because, of course, she thinks she's very regal and delicate. Shellpaw is the result of the fling between Thistlepelt and Slugleg, and he isn't very close to either of his parents. Instead, he's fully attached to his Aunt Olive Nose, who is also his mentor in the Healing Den. He shares her dramatic personality and hangs on her every word, and is genuinely excited to be the next in a respected line of doctors from their family. He's older than most of the other apprentices in the clan, but hasn't yet earned his full name. This doesn't discourage him. He's of the opinion that he'll get his name when he earns it, and not before, and he wants it to be something he truly earns, and something with real meaning. Names are important in Sage Clan, and he wants his to be a good one in case it becomes one of those names that gets passed down. He has his father's straightforward sincerity and his mother's charisma and flair for performance. He's that doctor even kids are excited to go and see because he makes getting checkups fun thorn in your paw? He'll tell you a joke while he's pulling it out so you don't even notice he's doing it. Wow, you did so good, and what is that? A pretty flower behind your ear? How did that get there? He'd love kits of his own, but he knows that's not in the cards thanks to the code, so instead he lives vicariously through taking care of the kits of other cats. He's especially fond of all his younger half-siblings, and can often be found playing with them when he has free time. Roachpaw is another of Thistlepelt's children, mothered by his current mate Lilythroat. Her sister Beepaw is her twin, and given that they're an inseparable pair, I've taken the liberty of drawing them together. It's common even for their mentors, Fireberry and Spiderstorm, to get them mixed up, and it's not entirely the older cat's fault. Roachpaw and Beepaw like to purposefully pretend to be each other and see how long it takes other cats to figure it out. They have one brain cell shared between them, and all of its power goes toward the uncanny ability to imitate each other. Their mentors have started training them together on the theory that if they're getting the same lessons, it doesn't really matter which is which. The surest way to tell them apart is that Roachpaw has a little scar under her chin that she got when she slipped while climbing some of the larger rocks around the territory. She and her sister have very seriously considered giving Beepaw a matching scar just to commit to the bit, but so far they've decided against it. After all, if they're making other cats spot the difference, there ought to be a difference to spot. 
That's only fair. And they share their father's earnestness. They don't want to make a puzzle that can't be solved. Of course, they are not actually carbon copies of each other. They like to play into it because they physically look so alike and they think it's funny. But if you get close to them and spend any actual time with them, you begin to notice the differences in their personalities. Roachpaw tends to be a little more outgoing and a little more daring, while Beepaw is happy to just go with the flow. Beepaw is also the better fighter and a faster learner. It often takes her one or two tries to get something that will take Roachpaw a full hour of practice. This means that Beepaw often has to pretend to be less confident than she is to keep the joke going. But she's confident in her skills and performs well when it matters, and she can help her sister catch up in the downtime, something she has no problem doing. Sage Clan has two current queens. The first, Lily Throat, is incredibly smart, unlike her mate Thistlepelt. Not that many cats know it. Lily Throat is probably the cat that best exemplifies the idea that the cats in this clan wear masks as it suits them. Outwardly, she is sweet, demure, and offers little opinion. If asked what she thinks about things, Lilythroat will bat her eyelashes and say certainly she doesn't know and surely there's someone better to ask. Privately, Lilythroat is cunning and a master manipulator. She can make any cat do most anything she wants and make them think it was their idea. Most of the decisions that Thistlepelt makes in his role as deputy actually come from Lilythroat. She wouldn't say she's using him, though. In her mind, they're a team. She's the brain and he's the face. She genuinely loves his simple sincerity and chose him as a mate because he's the one cat she is completely certain she can trust. At present, she has one kit in the nursery with her, Cricket Kit. After her first litter only had two kittens, and her second only one, she's become overprotective and determined to make sure her kittens have the best possible chances at advancing in the clan. Despite the fact that Cricket is past due to be apprenticed, any time the subject comes up, Lilythroat will make her eyes big and her voice wobbly and say, Oh, just a few more moons, her baby isn't ready yet. In reality, she has her heart set on Cricket Kit being mentored by Slugleg, and is trying to stall until Tansypaw becomes a warrior and Slugleg is free to take a new apprentice. Cricket Kit, meanwhile, is desperate to get out of the nursery. He is incredibly envious of the current apprentices and doesn't care at all who mentors him as long as somebody does it soon. He resents his mother's babying, assuming it's because she just thinks he's not capable. He often likes to pointedly pounce on feathers and bits of nesting material to show he already has the basics of hunting down, and he takes play fighting with the other kits in the nursery way too seriously because it's the only fighting practice he gets. The issue is that Cricket Kit takes after his mother, not his father. He has her brains, and while he hasn't refined his ability to manipulate in the same way, he is rapidly picking it up. His main goal is to make her let him out of the nursery, and he's trying to work out a way to make her think it was her idea. If she knew, she'd be so incredibly proud of him. Sootstripe is the other queen, Barkspine's mate, and currently looking after four of his kittens. Just like Barkspine, she wants a big family and is toying with the idea of becoming a permanent queen given that the clan is doing so well and isn't hurting for warriors. She could stay in the nursery, and things would still run plenty smoothly without her. Besides, the nursery almost always has at least one queen in it at this point, and it would be helpful to have an experienced cat to look after them full time. Two sets of paws are always better than one. Sootstripe shows her mate steady and responsible qualities, making her perfect for that role. She is quiet when compared to her clanmates, but that's just because she enjoys a supporting role rather than the spotlight. She is patient and loving, and is great at kit-sitting because she is wonderful at improv. She can join in any kitten's game of pretend in whatever role they want her to play, and be expected to put her whole heart into it. She especially loves any games where she gets to have a dramatic death scene. Her current litter of four is about four moons old, old enough to be in that long-legged, lanky phase between kittens and fully grown cats. They also have pretty clear personalities by this point, and are starting to get to the age where they think they're very mature and should just be apprenticed early because clearly they can handle it. Acorn Kit is the oldest sibling, and therefore considers himself to be an authority. He thinks he's very mature and responsible, and is always the one to remind his siblings to behave and listen to their mother. He's one of those cats that knows the code by heart and gets very persnickety about rule following. It makes him come across as a little snotty and overbearing. But as he grows, he'll mellow out a little into a respectable and model warrior like his father. Rootkit has future decorator written all over her. She is distractible and daydreamy, and will often spend time meticulously arranging her nest to look pretty. She isn't unintelligent or unobservant, though. You might think Rootkit isn't paying you any attention, but if you ask her what you just said, there's a 99% chance she can repeat it word for word. She's just one of those cats that has to be doing at least two things to properly concentrate. 
it wouldn't be unreasonable to say that she has a little bit of kitty ADHD. Since I had free reign on designing her, I gave her little freckles in her eyes, a detail I think is super cute. Rattle Kit is the spiciest of the kittens, and always the first to instigate a play fight. He was named after a rattlesnake, a common threat in this area, and he really lives up to that name. He's reactionary and tends to act on instinct, and while he loves to play fight and talk big about how he's going to be a powerful warrior one day, when he really feels threatened, he goes into defense mode. He's one of those cats that will roughhouse right up until he actually gets hurt, and then it's all tears and hiding in his mother's fur for comfort. Thunderkit idolizes her big sister Slugleg, and wants to grow up to be just like her. And whenever she's not in the nursery, she's following Slugleg around like a lost duckling, asking if there's any work she can do. Slugleg loves her, and humors her by giving her little nothing tasks that get her back into the nursery. She'll dutifully clear the nursery floor of stray leaves and bits of grass, and deliver important messages to her mother or Lilythroat, as though it's the most vital thing in the world. It was also her time spent with Big Sister Slugleg that helped Thunderkit, who was born a Tom, realize that she can't fit her better. It was Slugleg she told first, and Slugleg who supported her and made her feel comfortable enough to tell the rest of the clan. She really hopes Slugleg will be her mentor, and plans on not so subtly hinting to Chantrell Star that that is something she wants. The next three cats are the three elders of Sage Clan, and as they're part of a match set, I'm going to give the basic explanation before I launch into them individually. They are three sisters, and because this clan is in part inspired by theater and classical literature, I thought it would be fun and appropriate to model them loosely after the three fates. The descriptions the generator gave me were incredibly samey, so I figured having a clear idea of how to differentiate their personalities was a good idea going in. I also gave them the shared adornment of dandelion, partly because dandelion is associated with soothing aches and pains, and partly because it was a good excuse to have them wear the same flower, but at visibly different points in its life cycle. That wasn't my idea. A kind fan suggested it in the chat during an art stream I did. It's also worth noting that Sage Clan treats their elders a little differently than other clans. To them, elder is not just what a cat becomes when they retire, but a role with as much importance as a warrior, doctor, or guide. Sage Clan's focus on history and bloodline means that they are incredibly respectful of their elders, treating them more like an official advisory council than anything else. Chantrell Star often asks these three cats for advice, which is another reason I thought modeling them after the fates was appropriate. A quick refresher. Moongaze is a cat I've already introduced. Her speed paint is available in the video about doctors and guides. She is Sage Clan's guide, and her design is based around evening and the fate associated with the end of one's life. She is blind, something which in this clan marks her as a cat with a special gift and destiny. Her dandelion adornments are older leaves and the scattered seeds stuck in her coat, giving her a sort of wispy and dreamy look. Skybloom is the cat we drew during that art stream. I didn't record Skybloom's drawing process since she was drawn on stream, and it would have been a nightmare to edit together, because I kept pausing to talk with the chat, but those streams are available to watch on my channel if you'd like to see my art process in real time. Skybloom is the middle sister, associated with the middle of the day and the present, and Skybloom is a very in-the-present sort of cat. Not much gets to her. Her children are Olive Nose and Thistlepelt, and she is the cat from whom Thistlepelt inherited his simple sincerity. She is not smart, but she is wise, which are two very distinct things. Skybloom doesn't get caught up in holding grudges. She doesn't brood over what could have been or let herself fear for the future. She takes life as it comes and is able to weather basically any hardship with good grace because of it. You would think that this would make her advice not very helpful, but on the contrary, she's very good at looking at the current facts of the situation without letting anything else cloud her judgment. She never falls victim to the sunk cost fallacy and is a firm believer that the only thing ever holding a cat back is themselves. Her dandelions are in full bloom to go with her bright and sunny attitude. Suntooth is the youngest sister and themed around the fate who presides over birth. Her visual inspiration was the early morning. She's the most energetic of the three sisters, and spends the most time around the clan's kits. She prefers to be in the nursery to hanging around the elders' den, and any time a new pregnancy is announced, she's the cat who's most excited about it. This may be because Suntooth herself was unable to have kittens. Instead of letting this depress her, she decided that she would simply be the second mother to every kitten in the clan, and she's kept that promise to herself since she made it. Given how rambunctious Sage Clan kits tend to be, her help is very appreciated. She often joins Sootstripe in pretend games with the kits, and particularly likes playing the role of the vicious cougar or escaped two-legged dog. In some ways, she still acts like an overgrown kitten, and has never let growing older rob her of the joy of youth. 
Her dandelions are pre-bloom, not ostentatious or showy, but still decorative. She thinks they're prettiest as buds, when they're still new and fresh and have all the potential in the world. And that, at long last, is all of Sage Clan. I've already begun on the Mist Clan cats, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already so you won't miss when their video comes out. Mist Clan is the last of the four clans, but don't fret, I have a lot of content planned past that, like videos designing the clan's territory and camps. There's still plenty of kitty cat content on the way. Thank you all so much for watching, and see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.